Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> long time no see it's been a while it has right rise of the resistance was like the last time we saw you man man i didn't even get to write it i didn't even get to write it <laughs> i'll be there next week though so oh you're gonna be there next week nice 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 all right here we go what is going on ladies and gentlemen my name is anthony this is my co-host sam i can introduce myself the oh. disrespect no whatever no, no, dog. Dog, whatever i'm just trying to be a good co-host man <laughs> You're doing a great job. I'm doing a great job. Thank you. We run a little podcast you may or may not have heard of called the Mindless Horror Podcast. Probably haven't heard of it. Probably haven't. Um, today we have a very special guest. We're continuing our, our, our reign of, of guests that we've been having on the last couple weeks. Uh, and his name is J.P. Land. Hello, people. <laughs> How's it going, J.P. Land? How's it going? It is going very good. Just got back from the park, actually. Nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice, nice. Anything, anything new going on at the park recently, or what? I don't want to dive too deep into it, but a lot of new rides coming along. Very yep. exciting news. Nice. Yeah. All for all your beautiful Universal um, updates. Uh, need to know info? Go subscribe to JP Line if you're not already subscribed. That's how I get to know all my Universal stuff because I don't get to go out there very much. Yeah, it's a little bit of a drive for us. But when I do, it's it's a good time. But to keep up to date with the parks, I I tune into JP Line to see. What's going on? And he's really good with keeping you guys up to date. So definitely go subscribe to JP Land. Um, all right. Much. Yeah, no problem, brother. No problem. So today uh, we we have him on. We, we want to talk a little bit about him. So JP Land, let us know. Let us know how did th how did this all start? What what made you want to start doing uh, a Universal Channel, man? Well, theme park. Well, first off, theme park. Yeah. The theme park channel. Yeah. <laughs> so it actually all started off with. An idea like Walt had a dream I had a dream myself <laughs> and that's for me to record I guess progress of Universal Studios Hollywood uh, what inspired me to do that is actually my father worked for Universal he had a bunch of pictures from back in the day so that inspired me oh when I'm older I want to kind of document everything that happens around the park show off what's new how everything was built the process for all of that because maybe in the future you know if I have kids, I want to show them, and hopefully that'll continue the the whole journey of JP Land 21. So that's definitely what inspired me to do what I'm doing right now, and I love it. De yeah, definitely going to the park every uh, every day, gi giving us them updates. Um, that's that's some really true commitment, brother, and I applaud you for that because I don't see a lot of people who will go consistently to uh, keep going with the updates you know releasing new videos um talking about the park and stuff that's that's really good consistent and honestly it's it's good for people who actually have the same love for the park too because if not a lot of people can make it out there all the time well you got them covered on youtube to let them know what's going on when stuff is opening um when events are going on at the park uh what's coming new in the city walk you know i mean it's it's just it's just i think it's a really interesting concept of a channel uh, to really that and not only that but he does cover other theme parks too when he gets the chance to go out to them he did it he did I know he was at Disneyland we caught him at Disneyland um, yeah that's was, that was cool <laughs> yeah I mean he, he goes to other parks as well I mean um, but Universal is his like home filled turf man that's like that's his stomping grounds right there and, and that's <laughs> I think that's awesome man I mean I love Universal too man if I can go every day I would I really would because I would I just love spending time in that park it's just so many memories and Watching it change and grow, and for the better, it looks just phenomenal as it's, as it's come to known as now. What attraction do you think you've been on the most? <laughs> uh, I'd say... Hold on, I can hear myself a little bit. Uh, probably the studio tour. Studio <laughs> tour, man. That is that is probably the... I think it's the best ride there, in my opinion. I agree. I love the studio tour. I could sit on that thing all day. I really can. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it's it's there's always something changing on it. You never know if you're gonna run into filming 
of some sort, whether it be commercial, movie, TV show. I mean, I think it's it's one of the best attractions they have. Mm -hmm. I think that's why so many people go to that place, too, because of the studio tour, which is amazing. And Harry Potter. I mean, I like Harry Potter, too. Well, you know, I'm a big fan of the Jabberwockies. So that brings me to Horror Nights every year. <laughs> Just why do you why do you say that? Why do you say that? It why do you say that? Bomb? Why do you say that? <laughs> he knows I don't like the Jabberwockies. Um, I like it. It's just you, not the best show, you know. For yeah. Horror Nights, it's, you know, I, I appreciate all their work they do for bringing out and bringing themselves out to Universal for Horror Nights. It's just it doesn't really work in, in the terms of horror. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I do. I get you 100. percent so what made you decide on the name JP Land? Ooh, that brings me back. All right, so the name JP Land was probably decided within 2009 and 2010 when I first started playing, believe it or not, Minecraft. <laughs> nice. We so uh, I, I don't think I understood the concept of Minecraft where you have to create a username. I thought you just create a world. I created my world to be called JP Land. Uh, I added the 21 just to look more symmetrical. I feel like it fit. Um, so I added that in, and that's where JP Land pretty much started, the name at least. Yeah. It all started from a concept on Minecraft, and it's grew 11,000 subscribers now. I mean, you can, can you um, imagine, like, that's a lot of, like, a lot of what people will always start with, like, a video game or something like that, have this username and stick with it. And it becomes like their their name. I mean, Mr. Beast, you know, White Boy Seventh Street, like all these YouTubers, sometimes have that. like out there, you know, <laughs> usernames, and they become big time names. So, man, JP Land is gonna be one of those names pretty soon. You watch, it yeah. already is growing. And I feel like the biggest question I receive is, what does JP stand for? I don't feel comfortable like sharing that right now. I feel like in the future I will definitely show it, share it off. Uh, I'll tell you guys in private. <laughs> sure. Uh, but yeah, but it's actually my full name. It doesn't stand for Jurassic Park or anything. Yeah. So I wore the shirt for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, it wasn't shirt for nothing. And one thing I do have to say, from my original concept of me creating this just for my future self, you know, it, it progressed into something else. I mean, now I have a whole community. They look up to me. I look down to them. And we're, we're combined together, and I really like, uh, I guess, interacting with them. It's really cool meeting them at the parks. And if they're watching, shout out to you guys. You guys are the people that are keeping me going right now. Because there are times, I have to admit, I'm not feeling very motivated at the park. And you guys are the ones that keep me going. So, that's, Definitely, uh, man. Yeah, I mean, that's that's. I think at the end of the day, that's what we all do it for, is the community, man. They're the ones that keep us keep us going keep us wanting the more videos and in the end of the day it's just it's only about the community and to see what their feedback is just to we give our opinions out and then they give their opinions back and it's 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 a good thing it's a good collaboration in the end i mean i love that's the one thing i love about youtube is is the fact that there's people that have the freedom to comment down their opinions and um sometimes good sometimes bad um but but majority of the time, the if they love your content, it's going to be good. And to see that support of your fans interacting with you through the videos is such an amazing feeling, man. I mean, it just it tells me that I'm not doing this for nothing. I'm not, you know. So it really, it really is a, a joy to to hear back from fans. That's why I love reading comments. It, that's me personally. I mean, I know a lot of people are different with comments. I mean. Some people scroll through them and read certain ones. I, I try to read all of them, and I try to respond or like all of them. So, But, I mean, yeah, man. I mean, your journey has been insane, man, and you've been growing really rapidly within the last year. I mean, you just hit 11,000 subscribers, man, and, um, you know, your journey to 10K was – it, it was a, it was a a long journey for you. So you started this channel. You said when back in two thousand fourteen. Fourteen, huh? So from two thousand fourteen all the way till now, it's been a journey for you. It has. It's been a long, very hard working journey because you're going constantly updating, letting everybody know all this construction that's coming out, refurbishments new restaurants new stuff coming to the city walk you know all this new stuff hhn related 
other events they have throughout the year. You're coming in, you're sharing it with your fans. What do you find the most difficult with, you know, having a community this big? What do you find the most difficult about uh, creating your content? Like what, 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 what challenges arise when creating new content? Challenges wise, I mean, there's the whole, there, there's two perspectives. There's the quality purpose and then there's the whole, I guess, community. There are obviously not everyone's gonna love you. Not everyone's gonna, uh, not everyone's gonna love your content, of course. And of course, they don't really comment nice things. You know, my main goal is to take everything they say into account. I don't take it too seriously. That's one of the challenges I have to face. You know, sometimes those people make me feel uh, dismotivated, but. Again, those are just challenges brought into everyone's life. Of course, we have to ignore them. You know, just carry on, do what you love, follow your dreams. You know, if they're hating, that means you're doing something right. You know. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Um, what What has been the biggest thing you've learned uh, in your few years of YouTube? A few things I've learned. I've learned how to use a camera properly. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's always the biggest thing too with a, a YouTube video. I mean, gotta know how to use that camera, man. <laughs> I mean, in the beginning, you're gonna have to do everything kind of by yourself until you know you build up a community and you have, you know, you become like a major company outside, like right? cameraman and everything, man. Yeah, I mean, that was the first thing I had to learn is learning how to use a camera. And from I there, still don't know how to use a camera. Still don't know how to use a camera. It's okay, buddy. We'll, we'll teach you. Well, that. especially for you guys, you guys are filming like horror night scary farm that's crazy yeah i mean for that i i, I think you'd need like really nice low light cameras <laughs> yeah definitely no and i mean we we have what we have we work with what we work with but in the end of the day i mean we try to get what we can try not complain i mean at the end of the day we're there just to have a good time and just enjoy ourselves because like you said man you just got to have fun with it you just got to kind of enjoy it because it's 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 fun to do and it's 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 a good time for us. I mean, we we're, we have the we have the pleasure of going to all these haunt events and everything and to enjoy everything and meet new people and, you know, look at new things that are involved with these events every year. So, that's been kind of my my blessing doing this job is I get to enjoy all these haunts, everything, man. I get to enjoy the community and Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. I think it's always good to remember Especially as we're creating content and, you know, maybe there's times when you're like, I don't feel like doing this. Yeah. Like, remembering why you're doing it. Like, we're fans of what we do. Yeah. First and foremost. Um, and we're able to share with other fans. Definitely. Um, and so those times that maybe you don't get a comment you don't like or, you know, you're, you're a little tired because, you know, your personal life may be getting in the way. Um, you, you know, you just got to remember, like, I'm here to, to have fun and... Mm. Well, I'm having fun, you know, maybe I'm having a camera in my hand or maybe I'm shooting a podcast and or, you know, whatever you're doing, you know, shooting that Snapchat, that Instagram story um, and remembering that like, you're getting to share a little piece of your life with, you know, people who actually care about you. Definitely, definitely. And I can see that a lot with you, JP Land. You do that every week, man. Every week I've seen the videos. I'm seeing the love going into these videos. And uh, as a fan, I can tell you keep up the great work man i mean it's it's content that i enjoy watching and um as a creator keep up the grind man because you know the grind it don't stop exactly yeah exactly um i'm, I'm curious on this one um how often do you visit universal studios in like a given week all right so well, here i'm gonna put this in the whole school perspective because i know a lot of people ask me do you go to school do you go to work i don't work anymore as of right now, because I've been so busy with school, freaking psychology class. <laughs> psychology, right? I, I hate that class. No, I love it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love that class. <laughs> um, but last semester, I was a little more, I guess, I was more free. I uh, went to a different school. I did majority of my courses online. This year, I'm like, okay, I want to attend and be more social. I feel like that can improve my life a little more, keep me more motivated to visit the park, because... I mean, even last semester, I was visiting the park at least three to four times a week. Now I'm visiting at least two, two to three times a week. And that keeps me more motivated, enter in with a fresh mind, know what I'm talking about. You know, that's always important while visiting the park. You know what you're talking about. You know, you don't want to throw false information. 
you know, that's that's very important to me. Very important, yeah, definitely. Um, so with the rise of um, in the park, I know we have, of course, the Secret Life of Pets attraction opening soon, um, and the Super Nintendo uh, Land opening um, a little later. Uh, what has been uh, your favorite thing so far to see being built? I mean, I know a lot of these things get constructed and, you know, as the process goes on, it gets better and better. What are you excited for out of the two? I mean, to see, I mean, cause they look, I mean, I, I've been watching the videos. I seen the uh, secret life of pets one. They did an amazing job with the facade of it and they did. Um, they really brought this movie to life. I'm curious to see when it gets closer, the Super Nintendo world, how that's going to look and how that's going to have a feel for it, how that's going to immerse me into this land. What are you most excited for so far with the construction going on at Universal? So I'm going to answer one question first. Uh, I think the best part about seeing these lands or rides being constructed, it's like kind of like a baby. You watch it grow up, you know? Yeah. Uh, starting off with Secret Life of Pets, for an example, it used to be the Globe Theater. That's where they had kind of like a multi-purpose room uh, for employees. They would have employee events and some public events over there. Um, but then seeing that demolish, demolished <laughs> down to dirt and then being rebuilt into something so amazing, I feel like that's, that's probably one of the best parts of seeing an attraction, uh, just watching it get built, that it creates excitement and it just also leads you to a mystery, like what's going to be here, what are we going to see, what what are we going to expect to see? I feel like that's the best part about watching a, a, a ride being constructed. And then uh, one thing I'm very excited for, both Super Nintendo World and Secret Life of Pets, I know Universal is taking extra precautions to make the guests feel, the average guests feel more immersed into their rides and attractions they build. So with Super Nintendo World, I'm very excited to see how they pull that off. I mean, you're being put into a video game, so how can that be done? How, I mean, it's it's a little difficult to translate into real life. Definitely. No, yeah, especially with a lot of these new rides coming out, man. I mean, for example, like Rise of Resistance immersed you into that Star Wars universe, you know, and, you know, years ago I would have thought, you know, when Jurassic World came out, that immersed you even more into the Jurassic World experience. And then, of course, when Transformers at the time came out, like when it first came out, that was revolutionary. Like, I don't think anything like that prior has ever been done. And when they did something like that, it was just, for me, I, it was one of my favorite rides at Universal. So when I went on that for the first time, it was something that I was just blown away by. And then, of course, like I said, when Jurassic World came out, I went through that and it was something where I was like, okay, they had so much time to create a new experience. And in my opinion, they didn't fail too much. I know lately um, the Indominus Rex has been having a lot of problems, but it breaks I mean, my heart. It does. I mean, we went we went it's one time there. during Horror Nights. That was the only time he ever been on it, and it was broken. I think it was gone or covered up or or something. So it was covered. It was covered. And so. I cried. He cried. I love Jurassic World. <laughs> But um, for the most part, I mean, I liked a lot of the new animatronics they added in and a lot of the new scenes they added in. I mean, I think it's – I mean, I, I, I've always loved the Jurassic Park ride in general. I mean, it's just been a fun little water ride to get on. Um, and then, like I said, with Rise of the Resistance, they literally immersed you into the Star Wars universe and put you in the middle of, like, a, a major situation, which was amazing. And I, I, I don't – I don't know what's going to happen next with the Marvel Land, with Super Nintendo World. I mean, rides nowadays have a new standard that need to meet these requirements for fans to be more immersed into these stories and stuff. And I think with Super Nintendo World, from what I'm hearing rumor-wise, I mean, it sounds like it was it's going to be fun. No one will know officially until, you know, they come out with a press statement saying what's going to happen and what the rides are going to be and... You know what what the land's gonna give you as far as opportunity wise, but um, here's here's what I can say about this: Japan's is gonna be opening up pretty soon, so we can you know we can see what Japan's like and hopefully get an idea of what ours will be like. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, all right. Now, horror is a big element on our channel, obviously. I mean, it's a what are the words in our. In our title, right? I mean, it, it, it's kind of a big, kind of, it's kind of a thing, you know. I mean, 
Um, Halloween Horror Nights 2019, you went... Did you go just about every night? Almost 23 times. Nice. 20, wow. T- you hit the Jordan number. You hit the Jordan number. <laughs> there you go. What does that mean? Explain. My, Michael Jordan, the basketball player. Oh, The Jordan number. His number was 23. Yeah. Lucky number 23. I did sacrifice two nights because I was sick. Didn't feel like visiting, you know. Yep. It's a little hard. Uh, but um, – and then one of the nights I sacrificed to go to – what was it called? Not Scary Farm. That nice. was fun. Nice. I had a blast there. Did you, did you feel disloyal to the Universal brand when you did that? <laughs> just, just a kidding. little bit. I do I do have to admit I had – it was very – compared to Halloween Horror Nights. A lot of different scares. I went in there with an empty mind. I don't know what Not Scary Farm is. So I went in there. Okay. Horror Night style? Sure. Nope. <laughs> Freaking, <laughs> the first thing that happens is, uh, what is that? Like, the guy with the gun. He shoots in there. I'm like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, opening? Sure. Yeah, opening is the best. Opening, man. I was in the front row, too. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's our, yeah, uh, that's you know, our, that's our home turf haunt right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't compare that to, hor- I, mean, I I can, but, uh, <laughs> but when I went there, I, I went in with an empty mind, like I said earlier. I didn't know how these scares worked over there. It was very different. I see people just sliding around. That was crazy. Um, major props to them because I don't know what kind of crap they go through, you know? Yeah. Especially with sliders, you know? I saw them at Midsummer Scream. I think those were Queen Mary Dark or Sliders. If uh, there was the Cade Brigade there, which is like a sliding troop. They're a sliding group, yeah. They were, uh, they, they're both from Queen Mary and... Uh, I think there's some members from Queen Mary and some members from Knots. I don't know how that, exactly that works, but yeah, um, it's a mix. Yeah. Um, but but let, let's, let's talk. Let's talk Horror Nights 2019. Um, how many years have you? Let's well, actually take it back a step. How many years have you been going to Horror Nights? Ooh, it's hard to tell. I've been going since 2011. Hey, um, what's up, dog? Say what I'm saying here, man. That's what's up. Hitting yeah, that uh, 10 year first... mark pretty soon. <laughs> Yeah, I think next year, the year after. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, my first maze being La Llorona. I, yes. freaked, I freaked out. I pissed my pants, I think. And I, I don't know. <laughs> Literally or figuratively? Uh, Probably both. both. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you, dude. I don't blame you. That maze was terrifying. It was. I, and I wish Horror Nights was on the same standard as it was before, you know? Yeah. It was scary and until up to like 2017. I still scream in the mazes, obviously, but just not as much, you know? Yeah. I wish we had that extra boost of those original concept mazes. Those those are amazing. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. No, I agree with you, brother. I mean, 2011 brought in a good year. I mean, you had, of course, La Arona, You had uh, Scream. You had The Thing. You had uh, – what else did you have? Hostel. You're going to have to tell me. I you don't had know. Hostel, House of a Thousand Corpses. I mean, I'll, I'll always forget, remember that year. That was like the first year that got me more immersed into this universe. Um, going back to the, to now, going jumping towards uh, 2019, what were some of your favorite mazes of 2019? My favorite mazes of 2019. Remind me. What, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All these years combined, I was about to say uh, Poultry Guys, you know? Nice. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, 2019, uh, definitely a solid maze was Holidays in Hell, but that wasn't my favorite. Okay. My favorite maze this year was Us. Yes, oh. you win. You're my new favorite. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't blame you. Us was good. Us was good. That was translated perfectly. Yeah. I felt like I was in the movie. The first time I walked through that maze, I was terrified. And I, I, did, I did see a few changes. I mean... Uh, what was her name? Red. She used to have a mask. No, she didn't. Uh, or later on during the event, they removed the masks. Had uh, fa- face characters, which is very interesting to me. Yeah, definitely. And the ending was just terrifying, as you got to walk across hands across hands across America. There was this one black wall right there. I would sprint so fast out of that section. I feel like every time I ran out, I almost hit my. <laughs> uh, against that wall. <laughs> I, feel like I, went, I feel like I went body first into that wall every single time I went through that maze. I was terrified every time. I didn't know how many people were actually real in that room. And I was like, we only went in there twice. 
You yeah, watched my dismay. The, the, you went in there twice. Okay, yes, I only, but I only went to Horror Nights like four times. Yeah. Um, mine was Killer Clowns from Outer Space. We all know that. We didn't ask you. This wasn't about you. This is about JP Land. <laughs> I love Killer Clowns. It's great. So wait, uh, what about your all-time favorite? All-time favorite? Out of the entire event. That's a hard one. Exactly, yeah. Maybe that a top is... three? <sighs> top three? How are you going to make him go from all-time favorite to top three? It's hard for him to decide <laughs> one, dude. He can't decide three, man. Well, Come on. Well, maybe, maybe there was three of them that were in his mind. I don't know. I'm just taking a guess. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. La Llorona. Nice. Okay. We have... I like the shine, the shining concept. I didn't like the maze, but I like the concept. Mm-hmm. I'll keep that as an honorable mention. Uh, number two, El Kukui. Nice. Was that, was that 2011? That was 20... 20- 13. 13, yeah. Okakui. And. Mmm. I don't remember. The th- number three is a hard one. I, I would have to say Universal Monsters from 2018. That That's was, what I was hoping you were going to say. That was a beautiful maze, man. I And that really brought me back to, like, the House of Horrors. I, I missed that so much going through that maze. I missed it so much. <laughs> will it, will it replace uh, The Walking Dead? Oh, got tears of joy right there. <laughs> uh, <crossed>. No, <laughs> fingers crossed, but no, unfortunately, I don't yeah. think we'll see another maze there. Unfortunately, but it is a possibility that we will get a Universal Monsters maze. Fing- cross Universal, watch this podcast. Watch this podcast, <laughs> Universal. We Listen. want Universal Monsters three. <laughs> we want it. We want it. Um, we want it. But don't... if you were to go anywhere, oh sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, if it were to go anywhere, it would probably be by Transformers on the right side. Nice. Uh, they have an empty sound stage over there. Used for, I think, Steve Harvey show. Okay, yeah. I'm going to say that. Uh, those shows are usually easier to move around. Uh, it was originally in 29. They moved it to the, the other one. And then it's easy for them to move it to another one as well. Definitely. So, so that's where I'd see it going. Also, maybe... Maybe fingers crossed a whole Universal Monsters land because Universal recently announced that in their Epic Universe Park they will be having a whole land de- dedicated to the Universal Monsters. So that's probably another reason why I'm gonna go to Florida next year or uh, in the next coming years. <laughs> Definitely, uh, I gotta check that out. Yeah, I I uh I can't wait to see the content on that if you do go, man, because I will probably be extremely jealous that I'm not there myself, dude. I don't even care about the rest of the park. I'll be there just for Universal Monsters. <laughs> exactly, dude. I mean, they're the they're the freaking they're the they're the foundation of Universal, dude. The OGs. The OGs, man. And I feel like if Universal Monsters wasn't here, you know, Universal isn't what they are what they are today. You know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, no, I, I think like, that really set the bar for Universal, man. I think the Great Depression happened in the I'm gonna 19, say 1920s. 29, 1929 is when it started. Yeah, and I feel like the Universal Monsters definitely pushed Universal. It made it to the box office. It it kept that it kept them their company alive. So I feel like they should honor the Universal Monsters, thank them for their service. You know, they did Universal well, and they should have their own memorabilia into the park itself. Totally yeah. agreed. I uh I uh I just want to see uh the creature from the Black Lagoon finally appear in a maze. That's I'll, I'll be happy with that. <laughs> that's an amaze imagine a boat ride like a boat attraction themed to creature of the back lagoon right. imagine pirates of the caribbean but creature that would be crazy that'd be lit i'd be all for that probably sammy be scared yeah. though you know you know sammy is i'm scared of everything though but that's besides <laughs> point uh, but on the topic of universal monsters although i know all three of us can agree we want to see more universal monsters in 2020 is there any other things you'd want to see uh horn knights do in 2020 actually yes Believe it or not, Billie Eilish. I'm not even a fan of her music. I like her music, but I'm not the biggest fan of her music. You know, there has been a rumor going around that Billie Eilish is going to be amazed, and I could see why. I mean, market in the marketing standpoint, that's something that can bo- boost their uh, budget. Definitely. So, if done properly, I'd say Billie Eilish would be an amazing maze. Yeah, she does have some creepy music, especially her music videos. I oh, think it's yeah. for if you can see me in a crown. Which is like 
Because tarantula is like literally everywhere. Don't tell me that. Yeah, and they can mess with your phobias with some of those musics. Um, I all the good girls go to hell. They yeah. have that. There's a whole section they can do. I feel like they can pull off a Pandora's box with that lighting oh, yeah. wise. Um, you have some UVs. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, not the bad guy, but. See, this is why I'm not a biggest fan. Here, I have it saved on my Spotify. I'll, I only, I'll I, I, I only know bad guys, so I mean, like, I don't know any <laughs> other songs. I had heard this rumor. I, I know we mentioned it on East versus West, but I don't know, man. Um, we better get a Metallica maze before we get a Billie Eilish maze. <laughs> uh, well, it was rumored for last year, but it I know. Happened. We'll just do her Double O Seven. Just kidding. Um, is she doing the song from Double Seven? She is. Um, let's see. Bury a friend. Bury a friend. Yeah. That one. That one's a creepy, freaking music video. It's like Exorcist, oh, pretty much. Is that the is that the picture of her possessed on the bed? Yeah. Like, that was an album cover. I know that, but. Yeah, it's it's creepy though. I feel like they can pull. I feel like they can just reuse the mask. Mask from Truth or Dare or whatever from that Blumhouse maze we had in 2017, 2018. We don't talk about that. <laughs> I know, but like, you know. <laughs> change the hair to green and black. There you go. That's Billie Eilish, guys. <laughs> there there it is. I could see her big time promoting the event, too. I know she's signed with Universal Records, I believe, yeah. as far as music-wise goes. So, I mean, it'd be nothing for them, really, money-wise to get. I mean, it'd probably be the cheapest property they can probably... Um, well, if any... If anything, Stranger Things was a more expensive property to have. Do you think so, we're going to see season three uh, no. at the event this year? Uh, no, not any time. I'd say next year, but not this year. I would say if they wanted to redeem themselves, they would have to hit us in the head with season three, like, amazing. Yeah. But not even that. I mean, season four... Have you guys seen the trailer yet? Yes, he's back. Uh, Alive. I mean, I knew it was that. I mean, if you paid attention to the finale, spoilers, I mean. Especially you, the finale. If you paid attention to the finale, I mean, the guy says, not the American. And at that point, you're like, okay, it's, it's the cut. I don't think this is a spoiler at this point. Yeah, I know. The, the, the season's been out for like a year now, I think, almost. <laughs> well, see, like, I yeah, feel like we all just... want it. We all heard him say, not the American. And we're kind of just like, okay, I really hope he's still alive. And then we got the he's confirmation. Bald. But I'm also kind of hoping it was a dream that Eleven had, that entire teaser, because that would make it even better and make uh, you know America's heart break again. And there's no better way to keep people in tune than breaking their hearts. I don't know. We'll see. That's besides the point. He's bald. <laughs> that, well, we did we did lose someone, and it's his hair and his beard. I know, right? There we go. I saw this great Hopper, tweet. Guys. I saw this great tweet that we need to keep uh, what's his, the actor's name, David Harbour. We need to keep him out of Russia. Oh, God. Because of uh, Black Widow as well. Oh, yeah, he's in Black Widow. He's playing the Russian Captain America. That's going to be funny. Oh, man. Why is he Russian now? I know, right? Say, oh, what did Stranger Things do to him? <laughs> Stranger Things, he moved over there, got fatter, and became a Russian Captain America. <laughs> I thought he was the replacement for Thor, to be honest. That's what right? he looked like. Right? <laughs> <laughs> bro Thor. <laughs> bro Thor, man. Um, so we ask everyone on the podcast just when they join, and this is usually the hardest question of the podcast, is what is your favorite scary movie? My favorite scary movie? Oh, wait. Should I lock my door? Yeah, I think I should lock my doors first. Never know. Uh-oh. Scream reference. He's setting it up, man. Scream reference, you know? Watch there you go. Scary movies Scream reference, man. The guy... <laughs> Is a literal ah. genius. That is why you should subscribe to him because he just made a screen reference on my podcast. Did anyone else do that? Did anyone else go to lock their doors and windows? No. Before, uh, answering that. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I should be in the next horror movie for screen. <laughs> <laughs> be the smartest one. I mean, to be to be fair, if you were to put his knife in my doorknob, you know, he can unlock it. But I don't. It's think okay, dude. Smart. You could take him, dude. You just gotta aim for his freaking. Gotta go from below. Hit him with a low blow. Get him down, grab his knife, boom. Most of the time he's human too, so. I mean, he's crazy quick, but he's mostly human. And sometimes it's like three of them, but you know, you never know. <laughs> no, before I answer this question, actually, no, yeah. Before I answer this question, after I want to hear what 
what you've heard, I guess, in the podcast and what your favorite horror movies were. Because I want to see, like, how I can compare my answer to the rest. So my favorite horror movie is The Shining. Nice. I see that Danny, I see that Danny Pep figure in the back. Nice. Wait, where's that? Where's that? Uh, yep. Danny, oh, sorry, sorry. Jack Torrance. Jack. <laughs> Gotta um, love it. You know, I have us pop figures. One of them is on my chair because I threw my laptop and then, you know... <laughs> But yep. I have a few shining pops in my room. Nice. So let me ask you this question. What did you think of Dr. Sleep? I loved it. I love how I dug deeper into the form of The Shining. It kind of described what Danny felt, how how he felt emotionally, how he was overwhelmed with what he saw, you know. And they had that, I don't know. Here, hold on. Let me, let me get my sensor beeper. They had that bad <laughs> nice character uh wh what's her name i don't know her name oh you're talking about the the hat lady right no 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 yeah yes and no the kid what's the main i forgot her name dahlia the uh, kid that danny torrance was working with yeah 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 i know which one you're talking about okay i've only seen the movie twice <laughs> i've seen the movie zero times so that's uh exponentially more than me Exactly. But to you answer know, your that, question, favorite horror movie? I don't even know. So many great ones. Just pick Us. I, I, I want to say Us because it probably it was my favorite horror movie of 2019. But I actually, you know what it is? I think it's The Strangers. I think The Strangers is my favorite horror movie because that movie literally still terrifies me to this day. I got a three-way tie. Kill the Clowns from Outer Space, Kill the Clowns from Outer Space, and Kill the Clowns from Outer Space. It's only one of them. Relax. The sequel. <laughs> You don't know me. <laughs> you don't know me, Sammy. Okay, The Shining, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and I don't know the third one. He got two right. What is the third one? Uh, Halloween, the original. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I should have said that. The original Halloween. I was watching Halloween 2 last night, actually, so it's pretty good. Getting ready. You know what's the best Halloween? Which one? H H2O. Yes, H2O I don't know. is really good. H2O does not bother me. I My only, I, I think... The only ones that bother me are the f four through six, because they went a completely different route. They went like a cult route with my cult. Myers. Yeah, exactly. It was weird. <laughs> it just, I'm like, Ugh. it just, it didn't make sense to me. I was like, what, what are you guys trying to establish here? That he's a, he's your cult leader, or he's just a puppet for the cult? Like, what is, what is happening here? I don't comprehend. You know what's my favorite? Those uh, wannabe Walmart mask from Halloween. <laughs> right. Those are great. All right, and then what is what have other people? I've heard of Shining a few times. What other movies have people said? We had we had guests say the the Child's Play franchise. Child's Play, yeah. That was a cool one. Um, have you guys seen treat? the new one? What's up? No, oh, have you seen the new Child's Play? Yeah, we talk about, that. We'll talk about Mark uh... Hamill. <laughs> Mark Hamill, Mark Hamill was good in it, but everyone else. Uh... Aubrey Plaza was nice to look at. <laughs> What'd you think? Got some. I got some It vibes from it, but I also really enjoyed it. Actually, no, it take that time. back. It Chapter 1. That's my favorite. I don't. How did I forget that? It Chapter 1. It's good. the pressure of being on the spot. I know, right? Mm -hmm. On the spot. Well, JP Land, we want to thank you for being on our podcast today. It's been awesome getting to know you a little bit more, and hopefully your fans get a little better uh, inside depth of who you are um, for the community and how big of an influence you are to this community I mean theme park um, updaters you know they work constantly week by week but you're out there grinding every week throwing up uh, like two or three videos a week I see usually and it's it's an awesome awesome feeling to know that um, I have a lot of YouTube friends like you who keep up the grind man so I mean it is awesome that uh, you cover the Universal stuff and I can't wait to finally go to Universal with you one day man yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> Definitely. We got to plan a trip. Just hit me, hit me up on Insta. Definitely. Um, but th thanks again for being on the show, man. And I hope your fans, like I said, got a better insight of who you are. Um, JP Land on YouTube. Go ahead and follow him. And on social media, JP Land 21. Um, you'll find him what? You're on Twitter, Instagram. Instagram. And, YouTube. of course, YouTube. I mean, yeah. that's where it all goes down. That's where all the magic happens. So go subscribe to JP Land. Go follow his social media. Uh, keep up to date of what he's doing. Um, any last shout-outs, 
things you want to plug in before we sign off? No, I just want to say thank you very much for having me. This was very cool to get you get to know you guys a little better as well. Definitely. And you know, uh, hit me up if you're ever in the parks. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll hook you up with some fast pass tickets, you know. Dang, I'm all for that. He's got the plug. <laughs> you heard it here. He's hooking us up. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. awesome. Thanks, brother. I appreciate you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the Mile Sword podcast and we are the Knights of Horror. My name's Anthony. It's your boy, Sam. We have social media. We are Knights of Horror on Twitter and at The Knights of Horror on Instagram. Thank you for not making me do that again. I know, right? He's like, he, he, you know, JP Land, this guy forgets our social media a lot. Every time. It's hard to believe that you're a co-host now. <laughs> <laughs> I get him confused. I know one of them has the, and the other one doesn't. Yep. He does he, Sammy doesn't find it funny. He does it. Anthony. Sammy's just like, ooh. I am a bad co-host. <laughs> I just show up and hope for the best most of the time. Nah, you're a good co-host. He stepped up when it was needed, so that's all that matters. Um, of course, subscribe to us on YouTube if you're not yet subscribed. And hit that bell notification. Be aware every time we put up a new video. Uh, again, go subscribe to JP Land if you're not yet subscribed. And, of course, follow him on his social media to keep you updated of what he's doing in the parks or what he's got coming out in the future. And, uh, yeah, everybody, we, we appreciate you guys watching the video, and I hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.